Wilfried Zaha delivers the cross and celebrates. It's not going to go down as Zaha's goal. And there we go. It's as easy as that. Sissoko is not making that mistake I was talking about earlier. A nil-nil draw. Jason punching. Play it through. Berahino this time. Townsend. Hey guys and welcome back to the Crystal Palace career mode. This is episode 3 of season 1 and I'm going to do another little press conference. I wasn't supposed to do this but you guys left so many questions. I just have to do a quick little press conference. Not going to answer too many questions because there is a goal of the month vote at the end of the episode as well and I don't want to drag it out for too long. But let's get straight into a couple of questions and then head into the first game of today's episode. Rumours have it that Punchin wants out. What is your opinion? To be completely honest, I don't think he's a big game player. Jason Punchin is just a rotational player. He sits on the bench more often than not, so I don't care what he does. He can walk into my office and say he wants to leave. I'll probably just guide him out the front door myself. How much of an impact have your signings made in your opinion and are you happy with them? We kept three clean sheets in a row with Ashley Williams, so brilliant signing. We've only seen Sissoko for one game, but he was outstanding against Chelsea and basically got us to a win. And then we've got Berahino who hasn't really hit the ground running, but I'm sure with time he'll develop into a fantastic striker. You are pulling off some quite remarkable results against the Champions League teams. However, against teams that like to sit back and defend, you seem like you can't break them down. How will you go about trying to get the win, even when the team have 11 men behind the ball? If there is 11 men in our way, we either need to break their legs and get through or take long shots. Either way, I'm going to find a way to break them down from now on. If you don't win the league or FA Cup, will you resign from your job? Yes, yes I will. I have confidence in my abilities and in my team's abilities. We have to win something. We're gonna win a cup. Even if it's the Capital One Cup, it'll be good enough. But I don't think we're gonna end the season with no trophies whatsoever. When Mandanda was asked on Crystal Palace Fan TV about who he thinks deserves to be the captain, he answered, because of good performances and leadership, Kabai deserves it. Fair play, Mandanda. You pulled off a good save against Chelsea, but that doesn't mean you can call the shots around here. I'm still the manager and I'm gonna decide who becomes the captain. Looking ahead, if you can make top four and possibly win the league, then do you think your team can conquer Europe in the Champions League against opposition like Barcelona, Bayern Munich and Juventus? Whoa, we're getting way ahead of ourselves here. We've only started season one, we're not in Europe yet, but if we do make it to Europe, I've beaten Chelsea, I've beaten Arsenal without conceding a single goal. Why wouldn't we be able to take on those teams? Alright guys, those were the few questions that I'm answering today. Let's head straight into the gameplay and see how we do in today's episode. It's been less than 24 hours, you guys have been absolutely insane. Over 130 likes, that is incredible. Even the questions down below are just too much for me to handle, I had to do an extra press conference. But I'm happy to do so, I'm glad you guys are enjoying it. In today's episode we've got three fantastic games, including two league games against Tottenham and Manchester City. And we've seen what happened against big teams before, we are unbeaten in the Premier League. And we can take those, I know we can. We are sitting currently in 5th with 2 wins, 2 draws. Leicester are actually top of the league. This is what I'm talking about. Anyone can do it in the Premier League. This is kind of realistic. We've got Manchester City and Tottenham today who are in mid-table right now. I think, I honestly believe we can beat them. I also want to give a quick heads up that at the end of today's episode there will be a small goal of the month section. Every month we will do that. There's 10 months. 10 goals will get picked and those 10 goals will be put into a, a, an award ceremony for goal of the season. Now unfortunately it was the first month of pre-season and a few games in the Premier League so the goals aren't too great just yet but we need to pick the best one so make sure you stick around until the end of the video. But this is a team I'm picking against Manchester City. Musa Sissoko playing in the camera. Well, I thought he did brilliantly and uh, someone in the comments, I think it was Lionel Dawson said He's not too happy playing in the number 10 role. I didn't address this in the press conference, but the players need to adapt to the team. So yeah, they may not like where they're playing, but this is a team that works for me. It's strong enough. We're at home at Selhurst Park. Manchester City, you're going down. Huge game, but I'm up for the task. I'll we'll play Joel Ward against Gael Clichy. Joel Ward cuts inside. He's still going. Joel Ward all the way. Joel Ward makes it 1-0 three minutes into the game. And that is potentially a contender for goal of the month for next month. You don't expect that from the right back. A little ball roll, keeps dribbling, keeps cutting inside. On his left, Willy Caballero beaten. And that is the perfect start to any game you could ever imagine. James MacArthur back into Bakary Sacco. Sacco finesse. Sacco 2 0. It's 2 0 Crystal Palace. 30 minutes into the game. We are doing what I expected us to do, but not this easily. And honestly, big teams will have to adapt against us. This is exactly what happened with Leicester City last season. Big teams didn't adapt to how Leicester played. 
And that's why they got beat. And this is an exact replica of how their season went, pretty much. No Aguero, no Silva, no company, no Joe Hart. They're being disrespectful. And rightly so, they're getting punished for it. Down bottom, great pass. Musa Sissoko with space. Sissoko cuts inside, it's too easy. Musa nearly made it 3, and James MacArthur makes it 3-0. Everything is falling for us right now. This is a lucky goal, I'm not going to deny that. But the fact of the matter is, we are completely dominating Manchester City. They have not been in our half yet. I mean, I'm, I'm probably the most confused I've ever been. I know I said before that the Premier League is unpredictable, and the four previous results have proven that, but this... This is arguably the most shocking result of them all at half time. They haven't. Ha okay, yeah, they've had possession, but 10% of the possession has been in our half. 10% of, of, of both teams. That is just shocking. Great goal, Yaya Torre. They bring it back straight away. 3 uh, 1. I'm, I'm still not too worried, but it's a stupid, stupid goal to give up. I lost the ball with Johan Kabai. Yaya Torre, brilliant strike. Honestly, there's nothing Mandanda can do about that one. Play him through. Bakri Sacco in a foot race with Vincent Company, who's brought on way too late to change something. He does well to hold off Sacco, but honestly, the pressure from City in the second half has been immense. Why didn't they start Company and Aguero? And David Silva and Joe Hart, for that matter. And that's the final whistle. We pick up a 3-1 win against Manchester City. Uh, the first half was extremely good. The second half, we couldn't really cope with the pressure that went for it. I struggled to get out of my own half this time. So fair play to City for bringing back the stats. We haven't had a shot on target in the second half. Fair play to them. But it was way too late. And their disrespect cost them three points. Now for Man of the Match votes, there is once again a few contenders. I've been sat here for the past five minutes thinking about who should get it. And I think it's going to be Joel Ward. Fair play to the guy. He scored the opening goal. Very crucial. He back-pocketed. Nolito, their new uh, summer signing, who played a 5.4, the worst rated player on the pitch apart from Caballero. That is thanks to Joel Ward. Not just that, when Sterling came on, on the left, he didn't even get a rating. That's how good Joel Ward has been. So fair play, Joel Ward. Defensively and going forward, you have been outstanding. Not a single mistake from you. I know you were probably thinking James McArthur deserved it as well. Fair play, he was good, but then again, we did concede that goal. And where did that goal come from? from the middle of the park where Kabai lost the ball and there was no protection whatsoever uh, for our back line. So that's, that's I'm kind of a little bit holding that against him, whereas Joel Ward has made sure there was no danger coming in from that left side. Our back line remains unchanged for the next game against Tottenham. I think we did really well, but the midfield is a little bit tired. I can't risk to drop Kabai because he got an assist in the previous game yet again. He is really the playmaker of the team. Berrahino and Townsend and Jason Punchin coming in to replace tired legs up front. If things go wrong, I've still got the best players on the bench. We're going to White Hart Lane in what should be a very interesting fixture. Tottenham, a career mode team I have done on FIFA this year, but this time I'm looking to beat them. It's, oh my god, Ryan Mason is in one on one with Steve Mandanda. He hits it off the post. The rebound could come in here. Mandanda pushes that one wide. Great save. Good ball. Townsend against Kieran Trippier. He's got the legs, I know he has. Former Spurs player Andros Townsend bursting past. A few players before looking for the pass. He's found Joe Ledley. Ledley into Johan Kabai. Kabai looking for Wilfried Zaha. Zaha looking back for Jason Punchin. It's a save by Michel Vorm. Deception. Well done, Johan Kabai. Johan still going, looking for options. Where are the runners? Johan Kabai is doing his best to hold up play. He does well to find Andros Townsend. And he's just put that one wide. Shit, Lamella doing work. Lamella doing great work. Mandanda doing even better. Double save. Steve Mandanda. He's putting his name out there for man of the match already. Jason Punchin has the support of uh, Andros Townsend who cuts inside. Lovely. Andros still going. Andros all the way. Pull it back to someone. It's Jason Punchin. Michel Vorm. This is the battle of the goalkeepers. Zaha. Edge it towards Joe Ledley. Ledley on his left foot. It's a good strike. Michel Vorm again up to the task. Half time nil nil. What a incredible like nil nil this is. This has been entertainment all round. Tottenham have had seven shots, four on target. We've had five on, and five on target. Even game, to be fair. If it wasn't for both goalkeepers being in absolute top form, this could have been easily be been 2-2. Ben Davies, we're in real trouble here. Ben Davies could look for the cross. What a challenge by Scott Dan. Disappointing. Absolutely disappointing to come away with that game with absolutely nothing. Nil-nil. I don't understand how no team has managed to score. I, it, it, there's, no, there's not going to be any contest. Uh, Mandanda's going to get mad in the match, of course, but 
the second half was so uneventful. Like, we didn't get the shots off, we got in the right positions. It was similar. The first half and the second half was similar. Only difference was, we didn't really get the shots off, and Mandanda and Michel Vorm deservedly get the best ratings on both teams, respectively. I'm still sat here in absolute disbelief that we drew that last game 0-0, but we have to move on. We have a Capital One Cup game at Goodison Park against Everton coming up, and I was contemplating simming the game, but I'm going to try and sim as less games as possible, because the, the sim games are important for the man of the match and the player of the season award. Goal of the season as well, if you sim a game you can't get a goal of the season nominee, so I'm going to play as many games as I can. The Watford game will be for the next episode, but this Everton game, Capital One Cup, could be huge. This is also a trophy. We may as well go for it. We're on the way at Goodison Park. Let's score a few goals this time, boys. Sacco, look at the run by Zaha. There is a lot of space here. Zaha can look for Townsend back into Zaha. Not the best way we could have done this. Yannick Bolassi is through, though. He tries to chip the keeper. <sighs> that was incredibly close. Oh, Bolassi, great turn against Seamus Coleman. He has got the pace. Yannick Bolassi against Seamus Coleman. Still going, Yannick. Bolassi turns back. Passes it off. There it is. Straight at uh, the keeper. Zaha can't really follow up on that one. Good chance, though. Sure, that's a good ball. Gaston Ramirez. That's got to be 1-1. He tries the chip as well. I don't know why he did that. Injury. This is not good. The first injury of the career mode goes to Bakary Sacco. And unfortunately, that's not an award. Berahino is coming on for him. The referee just is not giving any fouls. Like, on a... He's getting absolutely manhandled. It's not even a foul, apparently. That ball is not dropping at our feet anytime soon. Mandanda, brilliant save. Get out. Oh, Kabai spots it. There it is, Townsend. Oh, no, just not good enough. Stecklenburg comes out to claim that. If we win the header, we're in business. We have done. Out wide to uh, Berahino. That is last man. Red... I swear this guy is not giving anything. The final whistle and that's nil-nil. I hope there's extra time and not a bloody replay. I can't be dealing with replays. Thank you. Also, Berahino has picked up a slight injury because of the dirty play Everton are playing. They're absolute assholes, I swear. Uh, Joe Ledley comes on as well to hopefully change something in the final few minutes. Niyase coming on for Lukaku. Oh, how has he gone past him there? How? Oh my days. How have they not scored? Oh, they've overcommitted a little bit. We've got a man running out wide. It's Andros Townsend. Does he have the stamina? Please tell me you've got stamina to get there, Andros. Townsend cuts inside. There it is. It has to be 1-0. Andros Townsend makes it 1-0 in the 109th minute. And honestly, it's not that Everton have played bad. They probably arguably deserve to be level, if not leading. But the sheer rotten mentality of trying to injure players, is that just makes me feel like this is justice. We're going to win the game because they're assholes. Oh, well done by Andros Townsend. Look at the space. The counter-attack is so on right now. Cut back. Play him through. Jason Punchin, he's full of stamina. He can get past the keeper as well, probably. Jason Punchin, round. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you come on as a sub, win your team the game, and get nominated for goal of the month, if not goal of the year. Jason Punchin, I salute you. I take back what I said in the press conference, he is a big game player. And that's the final whistle, Crystal Palace go through, they beat Everton 2-0 and honestly guys it's been a struggle but the way they've tackled my players, they've injured some of my best players, I think we deserve it. Yes, it was an even game, like on the footballing front, we were level, we don't deserve to win necessarily based on the chances but I'll tell you what, Steve Van Dander pulled off great saves but most of them with punches from crosses and corners. I'm, I'm not sure if he's going to get mad in the match this time. There was one sequence where Mandanda kept punching corners back over his goal. That happened about four or five times in a row. So, although they count as saves, they're not necessarily rated by myself because he should have caught them instead of giving five corners away and punching them five times. So, he boosted his stats a little bit, Steve. I'm going to give it to Andros Townsend, who got a goal and an assist to completely decide this cup tie. Let me know if you're keeping a little bit of track of the ratings of Man of the Matches and stuff because I've got a spreadsheet where I can take a look and I can tell who's winning right now. Obviously, I'm not going to tell you guys, but if there's someone out there who is keeping up to date with everything, then let me know. A broken ankle and a sprained ankle. Those are not injuries you get from just playing football. Those are injuries you get from being absolutely manhandled by the opposition. And I am absolutely disgusted. We've lost two good players for a considerable amount of time 
Okay, three weeks, not the worst, but three months? Relatively good episode today. We got two wins and a draw against really tough opposition, so I'm very happy with that. Stick around for the goal of the month nomination. Vote by clicking the, the eye in the top right-hand side of your screen. There should be an eye if you're a mobile tablet or on your PC. You can vote simply by clicking on there. Um, the punching goal obviously is for next month. It doesn't count for this one. So yeah, let me know uh, what goal you're voting for. Interesting games coming up in the next episode as well. West Ham, Watford and West Bromwich. I want seven points out of a possible nine in uh, that well, in the next episode, basically. I hope you enjoyed it. I want to thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all later.